welcome to another crafty chat. Um, I am coming at you today from a rather cloudy, I haven't been outside so I don't know the temperature at Nottingham in the UK, England specifically. And um, yes, welcome to my podcast. This is a predominantly knitting podcast with a little bit of crochet. I say that every week and then I haven't crocheted in over a year probably, but I'm always optimistic that there will be crochet. Oh no, that's not true, I crocheted a granny square recently. But yes, I would like to crochet more, but that's not the point. Um, hi, I am the owner of The Corner of Craft, um, which is a small business I have set up. Uh, I sell stitch markers and I also dye yarn under the guise of chromatic yarns. Um, and all of the yarns that are dye I dye are in colourways inspired by Dungeons and Dragons because I'm a huge nerd and um, yeah. So I've got a jumper on today because I was a bit chilly this morning um, and now I've sat down. I'm actually very warm so I'm just going to suck it up and deal with it because I've colour coordinated my makeup accordingly to my jumper. So I have one new finished object. I have one, I technically finished it last week but blocked finished object and I've got a few whips and mighty mighty stash. Um, enhancement, stash fattening, if you will. Um, even though I do also have all of this behind me. I know. People say you shouldn't feel guilt for buying yarn, but I do feel slight guilt because I actually need to start knitting it now. And I also want to start, you know, using my own yarn more. Um, so I think some of this may become Christmas presents. Right. Let's start with the tea I am drinking. I do this every podcast. This is the craft tea chat. I've got it in a really cute koala mug. Um, I am drinking the Time to Glow tea by Tea Rev. If you remember last week, I mentioned Tea Rev um, had their Kickstarter campaign going. They reached their goal. So Blend with Benefits will be coming out, which is a fantastic name. Um, but they are trying to make fancy teas more accessible to everyone. Um, and sent me a box of tea to sample and share. So I am drinking Time to Glow, Time to Glow, um, which is peppermint and spearmint leaves, rosehip pieces, ginger hibiscus, rose and sunflower, calen calendula, that's how you pronounce it, and osmanthus petal. I've never heard of that last word, but it does smell quite minty. I imagine this would do wonders for my digestive system because mint tends to, as does ginger, uh, does wonders for everyone's digestive system. And I had a Chinese takeaway yesterday, so my insides hate me a little bit. But it's okay because it's June the 1st. Happy June, everyone. Um, so back on the diet again. Mmm, because I've been off it for a few months. Now I've felt my weight gradually increase because I have no self-control. So I need to rein it back in um, because, you know, before it's too out of hand. Right. Oh, the tea. I am trying the tea. I am telling you what the tea tastes like. I then just made it for starters, so it's very hot. Mm. It's got quite a, it's quite a subtle minty flavour, considering how much mint in it is in it, but I suppose that's because there's both peppermint and spearmint in it. Um, and I was a bit worried about the hibiscus and all of the other flowers in it, because I'm not a huge floral fan, which is actually surprisingly difficult to say. I'm surprised I didn't call myself a floral flan. Floral flan, that'd be really pretty. Anyway, I'm not a huge floral fan, um, but uh, it doesn't taste too flowery. Uh, the mint is so strong, it just kind of comes through. Um, I'm not even getting overwhelming... Uh, overwhelming ginger. I'm just predominantly tasting mint. That one tasted a bit more floral. But yes, um, not, un not, un not in an unpleasant way. Um, really like this tea. Glad I've got, still got some left. I can have another one. Um, anyway, that is my tea review for today. It's like a non-review. I just tell you if I like it or not. I'm not that great at reviewing tea. I try my best. It's kind of difficult to convey taste across a camera, you know? Anyway, um, let's get into finished things. 
I finished and haven't yet blocked by Becky, I'm so sorry. Finally finished, um, way past the deadline. And I need to take the stitch marker off of this. Um, my After the Rain socks. Um, this was, I do have two of them. This was a kit that was a collaboration between myself. Um, I made a really cute green umbrella stitch marker, which I've all sent off and haven't made myself another one. Um, mainly because I had to make 38 of them and then didn't really want to make another green umbrella for, you know, a little bit. Now I am prepared to, again, um, yes, yes, it is this way around. Um, Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi dyed the yarn. Um, it's a Superwash Corydale and Nylon Base. And it's amazing. It's woolly, but not scratchy. It's nice. It's not buttery soft as a merino would be, but it's still soft. So here is what the stitch pattern looks like. Oh, and Becky of Soprano Knits designed the pattern. I forgot to mention that bit. So you've got a fun leafy, leafy design at the top. Got broken rib at the very top. Fun leafy design. And then this really easy lace pattern. She's, well, I say really easy. It is really easy and I still managed to mess it up. I messed it up on the foot of this one. But, I mean, you can't tell. I just repeated a row twice. Where's my phone? Here it is. Let me have a quick peruse to see if there's any kits left. I should have done this before. But that would require being organised. And I am not organised. The kits went on sale last week in Gabby's shop, Once Upon a Corgi. So she is onceuponacorgi.com for those who want to know. Do, 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 do. Oh yes, so there are still some of the After For Rain sock kits available. You get the pattern from Becky, you also get the heel pattern, which is the New Depths heel, and is the heel that I use on all of my socks. Um, it fits my foot fantastically because I have a really high arch. Even if you don't have a high arch, it's a really easy to remember short row sock. Um, so you get technically two patterns. And Becky's patterns are great because she includes video tutorials and photos and blah, 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 clear instructions. Um, you get a skein of the green yarn and I use less than half for my sock, so we'll be able to knit another pair of socks. And you also get the fantastic peachy colour um, in the kit as a mini skein, 20 gram mini skein. And I even had some of that left over, so I can put that in my blanket. Um, and you also get a stitch marker from me. And, well, and if you don't know my stitch markers at all, here is an example of what they look like. So this one is very old. This was one of the first ones I made, so it's quite tarnished at this point. Um, boo -boo -boo -boo. So this is an example. This is not the stitch marker you'll be getting. You'll be getting a small green umbrella. But um, I hand bead all of my stitch markers that I sell. Um, they take, on average, 30 minutes uh, to make each one of them. <laughs> uh, so they are a labour of love. I really enjoy making them, but I so beads together one by one basically is the only way I can explain it I suppose it's called bead weaving is the uh, technique and yes it is also why some weeks I do not get as much knitting done as other weeks because if I'm having a bead intensive day um, I then have epic hand cramp back pain whatever so then can't knit um, so just kind of want to exist and switch off the brain a little bit, which sometimes knitting helps with, but not when your hand hurts. But luckily for you this week, I've not had a bead heavy week, um, mainly because I've been away, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, yes, these socks, grab your kits. There aren't many left, um, but there are some, but there are not many because I forgot to announce on the podcast when they were actually going live because we changed the, uh, changed the date. So we could all have more time and blah blah blah. Um, so yes, get your mitts on them. They're just a really nice spring sock. Uh, they're a bit shorter than most socks that I knit. So wonderful. My next finished object is. I mean, you saw it last week, so it's not. It's just blocked now. 
and it's enormous. It's my Bendy Arrows shawl, and I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to be knitting another one of these. So this yarn is Lollipop Guild yarn. So this end colour here is Movit Movit, and it's all one skein. It's just pulled in a really nice way. And then the gold colour is Goldie Horn, and I haven't worked out a perfect way to wear it. I wore it out yesterday, because even though it's, well now June, but yesterday was May, even though it was May, um, da -da 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 -da. that's not how I would wear it. Uh, the weather has been a little chilly. It's like we've had our warm weather, and so now it's like, okay, we've had that. Let's focus on the next thing. But I really love it. And the yarn was 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon. And so soft. I had this on the needles for such a long time. So I got a bit fed up with it. And then when I picked it back up again, um, it sped off. It's really nice because I've told, said this before. But because you decrease as you go, you only have a few stitches to find off. This is the end. This little nub in here. So you... Um, don't have a whole ton of stitches to cast off at the end which can sometimes be a little disheartening because when you're finished you actually just want to be finished and you are with this so I think this will be getting a lot of use and it's huge but yes I think I'll be knitting another one of these or at least something a similarish shape because um, I enjoy it and that's the Bendy Arrow Shawl by Charlotte Bory fantastic I talked about that more last week, so I won't go into too much detail. I just actually blocked it and snipped all the ends off this time. Because um, I wanted to take it down when I went to see my parents last week. I wanted to take it down to show my mum. Because they technically gift well, they did, they gifted me that yarn. Um, anyway, let's move on to... Oh, I forgot to announce in the admin, the usual spiel. Well, let's do it now before I go into whips. It kind of makes sense. Um, so, if you'd like to follow me on social media, please feel free. Uh, links to all of my social media can be found in the description box below. And also down there is a link to the Ravelry group. It is the Crafty Chat Podcast Ravelry group. And you will see giveaway news, knit along news, blah, blah, blah. Um, I am currently hosting a, give, a knit along. It is the 50k sweater cow. Um because I've hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. I thought it'd be fun to do a knit along to commemorate it. Um, and as the title suggests, the aim of the game is to knit yourself a jumper um, or cardigan. You can be 50% done or less and include it as a whip. Um, and you got till the 17th of August, which is quite a long time. I'm planning on knitting at least two jumpers in that time, but I have got distracted by a whip, so that, who knows if that will happen. Um, but fingers crossed it will. And yes, I've got a chatter thread and a FO thread. Please do not chatter in the FO thread for that is where I'll be drawing prizes. The chatter thread is just for fun and games and shenanigans. Um, but I have a few jumpers I want to knit, as you can see from stash behind. So hopefully I can get those knit. Okay. Is that everything I wanted to say? Yeah, and also feel free to share it on Instagram and just you know community support rally the troops let's knit all of the sweaters because I was thinking about this as I was editing the podcast last week um the good thing about hosting I did feel a bit bad for hosting a sweater count now um because it's you know heading towards summer for a lot of people although you know there's a whole half of the world where it's heading towards winter so it's suitable for them but um as a general rule it's heading towards summer uh for me anyway but the good thing about knitting sweaters now is you can knit them, put them away, and then ready to wear come autumn slash late summer. So, I feel less bad. Okay, whilst we're talking about the cow, let's just, let me just show you what I've been knitting. So in my now overstuffed um, Villain Vine Yarns bag that Kristen so generously, kindly gifted to me, we did a little swap at Christmas. <laughs> Which is why there's a snowflake on it, um, which you can see, but there's a snowflake on it. Um, I have been, <clears throat> excuse me, knitting the Hoodie Shawl cardigan. I'm making a two-colour variant. Um, last time I showed you, I moved my sit, I moved my progress keeper. Useful me. I was somewhere up here. Um, I have finished the shawl part. I have sleeve holes, and I've started to knit, or I've just finished the 
right side, right and left, I get confused, to do anyone else? The right side short rows for the um, body. And yeah, I'm using my own yarns for this. This is, you know, first proper project I've knit with my own yarns. So that is very exciting. I hope it blocks out a little bit. This looks a little narrow. But I've also got chunkier since starting this. My weight fluctuates too much. It's all good. I'll, I'll get something under control. Um, so the purple colour. Let's, let's get the balls out. Come on. It's not an expression you often want to hear from people. So this purple colour is Vicious Mockery. Um, both of these yarns are my 100% Supporter Merino. Um, four ply yarn, sock yarn. Well, fingering weight yarn. I wouldn't recommend 100% merino for sock yarn. Um, it is not as hard wearing. But I wanted to have. So in in my shop, I have a few bases. I know this isn't a shop talk, but I'm going distracted. Um, I really enjoy working with Blue Face Lester. So I have 7525 BFL and nylon. But then I thought I'd have something a bit softer for the people that maybe wouldn't want BFL. So I thought I'd get some 100% merino in as well. Um, so yes. Vicious Mockery, which is a cantrip um, by a bard that a bard can use and you basically insult someone and it gives them damage, which is always fun. And then these are a variant of, um, not exactly the same because I couldn't remember how I did it because I'm awful, but they are a variant of um, a colorway called Blue Slard that I have recently re-dyed. Um, it's just a neutral speckles. This one looks more heavily speckled than this one, but this one's speckles are in there. I don't really know what happened there. I think it's just how the skeins were laying. Um, so I am alternating, because it's the wise thing to do. Um, Blue Slard is a, I mean, I want to say like frog-looking creature um, in the Dungeons and Dragons world. Um, I mean, it's not the prettiest of creatures, but it makes nice yarn. This is my favourite thing about... Um, uh, dying colourways inspired by Dungeons and Dragons is that some of the things that I dye are really nice colours but then you see a picture of what it is and it's just not that attractive. <laughs> I love it, it's the best thing ever. So Blue Slard um, and that is spelt S-L-A-A-D so it just looks like I've misspelled salad but I haven't. Um, yes. I've decided to not do the hoodie aspect of the hoodie shawl cardigan. I'm also making it two colour instead of three colour. This yarn was meant to be my Shusui shrug which I also hosted a knit along for and um, I will talk about that in just a second. Um, but then I realised I wasn't enjoying the knit at all so why should I knit it if I wasn't enjoying it you know? I wasn't excited about it whereas this I'm excited about. got quite a lot of it knit this past weekend. Um, we had a bank holiday weekend, I went down to visit my parents and managed to get quite a lot of it done. Um, so I just need to build up the left side now, which is the next step, I believe. But I'm such a fan of speckles. I'm such a... I oh, love it. Do, 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 do. I feel like I'm going to wear this quite a lot. Um, yes. It was really funny, I was knitting it in the car as we were driving back, which was a horrendously long car journey. Um, and Maria said, oh, it's really funny, those, those yarns go really well together, actually. I was just like, oh, funny that. It's like I dyed them or something. I dyed them purposefully to go together, he knows this. He's like, yeah, no, but, you know. Book. Um, yes. Dini. Oh, that's a pattern by Susanna Zoma. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. She's Austrian, so my German brain tells me that well, I don't have a German brain. The German language aspect of my brain tells me that that is how it would be pronounced. Um, speaking of the Shusui shrug, I completely forgot to show these in my last podcast. Uh, the winner has contacted me, um, and I will be sending the prize off today. But I forgot to share that I was sent. Some si Ooh, oh, I just presented these all nicely. Sent some progress keepers to include in the prize, and they're all anatomical. So you got like a kidney, you got a heart, you got a, I think it's a femur, and a pelvis, which is so cool. These little metal charms. 
and that is by Rainbow Zombie Crafts, which is a fantastic name. Um, and I'm so sorry I forgot to show you that last week because I am the worst, but I'm showing it this week. So I will now package this up uh, along with the skein of yarn that I promised you know, the winner, and I will get that out in the post. Um, and I will stop being the worst person. Okay, wonderful. Now, uh, living in my fringe field supply bag. Um, which has been getting a lot of love recently. I went through a phase of not really using it that much, but um, now it's getting a lot of love. And I got all my pins on it. This came to um, Ireland with me. Love it. Um, I am knitting more yarn by Lollipop Guild Yarns, actually. Um, this is just a pair of socks. Sorry, I forgot to announce that. Um, I cast this on at the airport when I was on my way to Dublin on Saturday as a bit of, you know, souvenir knitting. This colour is called Twilight. Um, it's also superwash merino and nylon. Doesn't say percentage, which is slightly odd, but that's fine. Um, I think it, judging by the metre, I just think it's 75.25. But. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's another stripey one. So the contrast to heels, toes and cuffs, well, it, at the moment I've got cuff and heel, um, is the Goldie Horn, same yarn in the shawl. Because uh, it actually goes really well with this. I was going to initially knit a sock head hat out of this, but I realised I don't think I want to. So I thought, let's cast on some souvenir socks. And yeah. Um, I'm using 2.5 millimeter needle. Uh, no, no, I'm not using 2.25 millimeter needles. I did a German twisted cast on to start. Uh, 64 stitches is my standard sock. I did 15 rows of 2x2 two two rib, and then changed colour and just started knit, 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 knit. And then once my sock got long enough, I did the new depths heel, which you increase for beforehand and then decrease afterwards to accommodate the higher arch. Um, my knitting gauge is actually, I'm just sitting knitting now, my knitting gauge has actually loosened up quite a lot, uh, which is weird to me that it has, but fine. Um, so when I first knit this, I increased the full amount that the pattern says, um, and now I only increased by six stitches, um, which is a few less. Or well, for this sock at least, I did anyway. Um, I need to have a bit of a play around to see if it's going to fit perfectly or what. But the yellow colour goes really nicely with the speckles on this yarn. Let's see if I can show you. So it's this really nice violet purple, periwinkly colour. Those are all bluish purples, I think. It's a bluish purple. Um, and then it's got some areas of just the white yarn with speckles of like a mustardy ye golden yellow and pink and it's just really fun and this kind of yarn takes maths that I don't think I understand but um, yeah I'm really impressed that putting a heel in didn't mess the stripes up too much you can see it a little bit it messed them up a little bit but nothing too offensive to my eyes um, so yeah I have this much knit and I knit I knit just before the heel at Woolen itself, uh, which is a yarn festival I went to in Dublin. And then I tried to start my heel when I got back to my Airbnb, but I was so tired, I was actually falling asleep, which is quite impressive. So I had to put the sock down and just fall asleep, uh, listen to the brain. Um, and then turn the heel at the airport the next day when my flight was horrifically delayed. Um, and then knit a bit on my foot, um, but then, yeah, I was knitting my hoodie short cardigan instead and I got a bit carried away from it. Um, yes. So my final whip, and there's a little bit stash fattening, but not really for stash. Um, I wanted to knit a scarf. So I just bought some Stylecraft Special Aran Weight. This is in the colour burgundy. It's just 100% acrylic, um, but it's very soft. That's why I like Stylecraft. Um, 
It's a very soft yarn. And yeah, just got a couple of balls of this. And I've cast on a scarf, which I'm in the middle of a row of. Oh, awful. Terrible. I'm the worst. Um, I cast this on two days ago and it's growing very quickly. This is the Baker Street scarf. I have completely forgotten who designed it. But uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I will need to block this somehow because the edges are curling in. But it's just broken rib um, in a really nice burgundy colour. So I thought, yeah. And I'm really actually enjoying this a little bit. I thought I'd be bored of it by now. I'm not bored of it. So um, the aim for today is to finish this ball of yarn and start the next. Um, and yeah. That is living in to transition nicely. I'm using five millimeter needles as well, which is like a needle size up from what the pattern suggests. Um, just to, you know, speed it along a little bit. And also because I was an extremely tight knitter, even though I said my gauge has loosened up, I'm probably more like an averagely gauged knitter. If there is such a thing, is there even such a thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try to transition smooth. It's going to be a long podcast today, I'm sorry. Um, I'm in a chatty, fantastic mood. Let's transition smoothly into stash fattening slash acquisitions. Um, because that scarf is living in my new favourite, one of my new favourite project bags. Um, this is by Emerald Fibres. I bought this at Woolen. It is... Um, a fantastic project bag with machine embroidery on the front. This is a creased label, let's find a non-creased one. Her bags are so reasonably priced. Do you do got all the info? Fab. I will also link it in the show notes. Um so yes, this is just a black bag and it's got sort of the aqua aqua blue um, thread and it's a storm in a teacup if you can see that which is ace and then the other bag which she showed so generously gifted to me because she's the worst is this one because i couldn't decide between the two and it's kind of like a denim blue i wasn't going to get it because i mean i've already got a blue one of these but this is a different blue um, there's Denimi Blue and then it's got an anchor and swallows and sailory. Um, I grew up near the seaside. So, that, I couldn't not. I miss the sea. It's the worst part about living in a landlocked, landlocked city. And so yes, I bought both of these at Woolen. And, uh, yes. So I bought both of those, or I bought the bag at Woolen and was gifted one. Woolen was the, I've got fluff all over it, uh, very first yarn festival that had been organised by the lovely ladies and owners of This Is Knit, which is a fantastic wear shop, uh, wear shop, wool shop, um, in the centre of Dublin. Um, and they so generously asked me to go as a podcaster. And I thought, sure, let's have one final crazy yarn filled blowout. Um, before I'm sensible again and it was such a lovely time if you watched my vlog you already know all of this and I'm sorry if you've watched it and I'm repeating myself but I know some of you don't like the vlog blah 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 and that's fine you do you um, and also I was very rambly in that vlog due to sleep deprivation but um I was really worried about going to Dublin by myself. I know I went to Edinburgh by myself, but I knew the ladies that I was staying with. I knew some of the people that were going to Edinburgh, so I knew that I'd have someone to hang out with at some point. Um, and I was really worried about going to Woolen because I thought, I don't want to really just be like sat by myself and feeling a bit awkward, but I was in a fantastic mood on that day. Um, I'm not saying that doesn't happen often, it does often happen, but sometimes I'm in a more talkative mood than others. My first day at Edinburgh I was not in a very talkative mood because I was so overwhelmed, but Woolen was really nice. It was in a much, it was in a really large um, sports hall basically, um, but it had great lighting, lots of space to move around. It was 
busy, steady, but not hectic. So I had time to, you know, chat to people and blah, blah, blah. And I just had a really good time. And um, found my Airbnb with no problems. And the only problem was that my flight was delayed by two hours coming home. But luckily, Verity of Truly Hooked, um, who is a yarn dyer based in Nottingham, in case you don't know, uh, vended at, vended, is that the term? Sure, at Woolen. And she was on my flight home. So I was able to sit and chat to her for the, while we waited. So it was really nice to get to know you a bit more, Verity. If I am, um, if you're watching this. Okay. I was gifted a tote bag, which I've already used, which is why it's crumpled. Not only to hold my yarn in from my purchases at Woolen, but yesterday I went shopping and bought stuff. It's a really nice size bag. It's got nice thick handles. It's got a nice buckety bottom, um, which is an odd phrase that I'm going to pretend I didn't say. Within that bag, um, I was gifted a skein of Studio Darnacle yarn. This is a double knit yarn, so I might cast on the hat. And then also a skein of the Fibre Company, is it Acadia? Acadia? Acadia. Um, in the colour Driftwood. Um, and this is 60% merino, 20% baby alpaca, 20% silk, which I kind of also want to make into a hat. I don't know if that would be enough for a hat. 50 grams. What do you think? You hat makers. I haven't made enough hats to know. I'm still relatively new to this um, game. And this one doesn't have a colour on it. It's 100% merino though. Um, It's just this really nice orangey colour. More hats. So yes, that was really nice of her. And then I also was gifted a woolen pin. Like I say, it was their first year and I will definitely be going back next year. Um, it was such a good time. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Where? Where? Um, then I treated myself, even though I wasn't going to buy from a UK seller, treated my, I'm just going through this quickly because I went into more detail in my woolen vlog, um, treated myself to a couple of skeins of Counters of Blaze, which now have my hair on them because I molt terribly at the moment. Um, yes, this fun jazzy colour is The Gin Made Me Do It and then this fantastic green is Repeal and congratulations to Ireland for the result of the vote and that's the only political thing I'm going to say about the matter. Um, and this is going to be a two colour shawl. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be great to wear around Halloween time. Just saying. And then I visited Das Monschaf, and in my vlog I said that Das Monschaf was the first Indie Guide yarn that I bought. And I was sure that it was, but I don't think it was now, thinking about it. I'm pretty sure that I got my first Indie Guide yarn was my souvenir yarn from Barcelona. But Das Monschaf was the first Indie Guide, um, yarn that I used in a project because I knit them first. Um, so yes, I bought these two colours. So in my vlog I said that this was disc wo Disco World. It's not. It's just Disc. Disc World. There's no Disco. But I mean, let's pretend life is a Disco. And this is Butterfly Effect. And they are going to be used together in another two colour shawl. And it's going to be fantastic. Just covering up my face. You don't need to see it. These speckles are everything. Look at it. Ugh. Um, and then I went to see Grace of uh, Babbles Yarns and um, Babbles Traveling Knits, Yarns, Podcast, Grace um, and treated myself to a skein of Calypso. These are going to be my souvenir socks from Woolen. Um, this is on her bamboozle base which is so much fun to say um, and it is 60% merino, 25% bamboo and 15% nylon so they're going to make nice soft strong socks and she has the best logo can we just discuss how amazing that is and she also gifted me a skein of orchid and um gifted me another skein which is also on her bamboozle base and she also gifted me another skein to give away to you all so I will be doing that that will be one of the knit along prizes um, and she also gave me a pin to give to you all and that will be going along with it 
because I've taken inspiration from Tristan and Christy of Girls in the Yard Cafe. Um, great podcast, much recommend. Also, I'm a bit obsessed with them at the moment. Um, I've been talking to Tristan quite a lot lately. She's just a very nice person. Um, and yes, they have a giveaway bin. It's a, just a, a box. And I've decided to start one. Um, so if, um, I will talk about this more in a second, but I'm going to put all giveaway things in a box. And yes. Final act was, no, two, I've got two more. Okay. I was sent a beautiful skein of Norwegian yarn. By Birta, she says, with a questioning tone, from Norway, uh, northern Norway. Ooh, cold up there. Um, she's Arctic Crafts, oh, that makes sense. Um, but she gifted me a skein of yarn, she's having a de-stash, and saw this yarn and thought of me and my ever-changing hair colour, which is still jazzy, I just need to book in to go to the hairdressers. And the hairdresser that I went to before now isn't at the salon that um, she was at and is now just doing home visits. And I don't really want my hair dyed at my home because it's not my home. And if bleach were to get on the carpet, that would be the worst thing ever. Because um, I'm renting. So I need to try and find somewhere else. I was recommended somewhere by one of my colleagues, so yes. This is a 7525 superwash wool and nylon. Um, do not use fabric softener. Good to know. Uh, 350 meters per 100 grams. It's just a single ply. She says it's that it's, although it's a commercial yarn, it's not that easy to get a hold of outside Norway. So it's Nordlus, Nordlus. She, once again, don't know how to pronounce Norwegian, I'm sorry. I sound German when I try to pronounce anything. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. She says it's strong enough for socks and they get wonderfully soft after washing, but I could also make a one skin wonder. So I'm thinking I might make like a one skin shawl or something with it. That might be nice. So thank you very much. And I'm really sorry if I mispronounced your name. I hate mispronouncing names, it's like the worst. Um, and then finally, I told you it's going to be a long podcast. I told you. Um, Mario went to Amsterdam with some of his friends for one of their birthdays. Some of our friends from Frankfurt. Um, and he went and visited Stephen and Penelope and took a picture outside it. And I thought, what an ass! How dare he go? But then he brought me back a present, so I let him off. Because um, when the, I've been, I've visited Amsterdam twice now, and a couple of times I went, I wasn't hugely into knitting. Um, yeah, that's a fair comment. And um, wasn't that fussed about going to yarn shops and blah blah blah. Um, so yes, this is a T20 superwash merino and nylon. It's 365 meters per hundred grams. It's a high twist. Oh, it's by Fru Valborg, and it's hand dyed especially for Stephen and Penelope. And this is in the colour, doesn't have a colourway name. Can't tell you. Merino Swirl. I imagine that's the base. I might be wrong though. A bit sad that it doesn't have a colourway name. Um, but yes, obsessed with these. So yeah, I think this is going to be socks. Obsessed with this. He chose well, did my boy. He chose well. He wanted to choose something dyed in Amsterdam, but then saw this, and even though it was dyed in Sweden, he still, he loved it and thought, hmm, Hannah will like that. So, he knows I love a bit of mint. Oh, oh. So yes, that is all my stack dash acquisitions. So one final acquisition that I've just quickly forgotten. Um, I was contacted by the fantastic people at Knit Crate and asked if I would want to review a crate and I said yes. Um, so I have been sent the basic Knit Crate um, and I've done a live stream, just a quick live stream where I, in which I open this but I thought I'd share it on here as well because once again not everyone watches everything and that's fine. Um, it is a monthly subscription service. They are based in the US. Um, 
but I personally didn't have any problems with customs and it coming through and it was set it wasn't sent as a gift it was sent as merchandise um, yeah so I didn't have a problem at all I'm just double checking all of the custom things are right yeah I personally didn't have a problem with customs um, that can put some people off if you're Europe based they do charge in US dollars which can be a problem because it just can be but I think it's worth it this particular box is worth $24 USD um, you get two skins of yarn you get two patterns and you get um, various codes to get discounts of other patterns and whatnot so this is La Brabus yarn, um, it's called Grey Twist, it's a mild sock yarn, 40% merino, 40% Peruvian highland wool, 20% nylon, um, fingering weight, 4 ply, 400 meters per 100 grams, and they're all naturally coloured, so each skin is unique. Um, it looks a little bit like baker's twine, but like in the most fantastic way and you get gorgeous patterns with it so you get a Daxus shawl which is 100% what I will be knitting with this yarn because it just looks so nice and drapey um, but you also get a crochet pattern crocheters they do not forget about you um, and the crochet pattern this month is a clutch bag um, and the theme this month was contemporary and within it um, it claims that the total retail value is $63 because um, each skein is $24 apparently so yeah you do make a saving um, and you can take a picture of your knit crate and post it to social media and you can have a chance to win three free months so that's pretty cool um, so yes if you would like your own knit crate I actually have a coupon code where you can have 20% off your very first box if you use the code corner of craft 20 I have written it in the description box below as well just in case I've misremembered it um, and also if you use the link which I put which I have put in both show notes and in the description box below this video um, to purchase your knit crate it is a it is an affiliate link and for those who don't know an affiliate link is just a link whereby if you buy something through the affiliate link the person whose link it is gets a little bit back so if you were to buy your knit crate through the affiliate link um, it doesn't cost you any extra if you're going to buy it anyway you may as well use the, my affiliate link uh, it means that I get a little bit of extra money from it or I get some money from it basically which is you know YouTube is a source of my income um, my online shop is a source of my income and it doesn't cost you any extra so I'm going to stop talking and trying to justify that because I'm British and awkward when it comes to talking about money um, I'm not having a shop update this week um, I had a shop update last week and then I went to Woolen in Dublin I had a fantastic time as I've already said and then I came back from Woolen on the Sunday, which is a very fleeting visit, and drove straight down to the south to see my parents and you know, various other family members um, for the bank holiday weekend. Um, luckily, I was able to have time off work. I was able to drive down to see them and then came back very, well, not very late, but late on Tuesday um, and then had work early on Wednesday. So I haven't had an awful lot of time to make things for a shop update this week. Um, but I do intend this weekend to, uh, and next week, which is kind of, it's just kind of annoying that I went away because I'm not working that much next week. And then, uh, this week, sorry. And then next week, my hours are traveling. Um, so it's kind of frustrating, but that's okay. These things happen. And I'm on a lot of opens, so I'll be able to come back and dye yarn. But I got a huge yarn um, order in. I got a lot in. I even got some DK in, which is very exciting. So I think I will be, and I think it's 100% B 
BFL DK that I got. Because you know I'll have a BFL. Um, I'm excited to dye some double knit weight yarn up. Uh, yes, so next week I intend on dyeing yarn and this weekend try and get some in. And yeah. And then a shop update next week. All being well. Um, yes. For those of you wondering, Mario did get his bakery job. He started today, this morning. He was up and out by half past five, um, which is fine. I also woke up, stayed awake for a bit, joined Tristan and Christy in the live chat they were doing on the Instagrams and then uh, swiftly went back to sleep again afterwards for a couple of hours. Um, I'm really excited for him. I'm really proud of him. Bless him. For those who don't know, Mario is my fiance. Oh, this feels so weird to say. Partner. Um, and yes, he used to be a teacher and now isn't. And is now a thinker. As you do. Um, yeah, I'm just going to chat about my stash for a little bit if that's okay with you all. I've been chatting to Tristan of um, Dragon Horde Yarn. As I've said, I'm a bit obsessed at the moment. Um, and have realised, not through anything she's said, but just through conversations that we've had, that I would like to knit my own yarn more. Um, I think it will be fun. I think it's, you know, mutually beneficial. Um, I can dye it exactly to colours that I want to dye it and knit things and it would be great. Um, but it does mean I've got all of this to work through. So I think I'm going to um, go on a bit of a yarn buying ban, unless it's things that I can't dye myself, like non-superwash, um, I do not have that skill yet, and also self-striping, I do not have that skill either. Um, patience, I do not have that, I do not have the skill or the patience to dye self-striping. Um, but I need to work through some of this because it's getting a little out of hand. It was fine when it was just one nook, but now I'm branching into two nooks. Um, and yes, I'm thinking that some of the skeins that I've bought that were destined to be great things are going to be um, gift knits, maybe. I'll have a shawl filled Christmas and make some gift knits. And yeah, I'm just knitting. Um, and it's not guilt that I'm feeling, it's just, I want to be able to knit things. I want to be able to support the Yarny community, but at the same time, I want to be able to knit my own yarn. I need, a, I need extra sets of hands, I need to be like an octopus, so I can be doing all of the things at once. Why are you getting tangled up now? You did not get tangled up before, what are you doing? So I fixed it. Don't panic. No, you won't. Um, yeah, just need more sets of hands. So the aim of the game is to work through the stash. Um, yeah, I think it'll be fun. After talking to uh, Verity of Truly Hooked and also various other people and just going to Woolen, I'm super inspired to, and motivated is probably more the word I want to use to, you know, have a proper crack at my business. I have had a proper crack at my business, but the yarn side specifically, because I have felt like I've been floundering a little bit. Right. I think that's actually everything I had to say, um, because this is an incredibly long podcast already. The tea is going cold, but not quite cold. Um, yeah. I'm going to go and do some knitting whilst I edit this. Um, yes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this podcast, um, please feel free to hit the thumbs up button. It's just below this video. And if you hit subscribe, you can, um, my videos will pop up in your subscription feed. And once you hit subscribe, there's a little bell that rocks up next to it. And if you hit that, you will get a notification through on 
your various mobile devices and also on your desktop if you're, you allow notifications on your desktop. You'll get a notification through that says the corner craft has just uploaded a video um, so you don't miss out on any of my videos because sometimes these social media algorithms aren't actually helpful at all, uh, especially Instagram at the moment. And if you'd like to follow me on any of my other social medias, please feel free. Links can all be found in the description box below as well as various other links like show notes. Um, if I have talked over something too quickly or I have forgotten to explain something better, do that. Go over, check that out. I will have written it down. And finally, don't forget to join in the 50k sweater cow. You've still got a couple of months, which is plenty of time. Um, all of the rules and everything are listed in there. And yes, I think that's everything I have to say at this precise moment in time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I didn't bore you for too long. And I will see you very soon. Oh, I hit them, my leg really hard on the edge of the bed earlier. Oh, that really hurts. Um, I will see you very soon, sorry, in my next video. Bye. Bye.